My goodness, what a different scenario it is talking to you this week versus last week. Welcome back to Brewpeg, let's get into it. Last week was all about the different components of the electricity system on board Brewpeg, the DC and the AC system, making it safer and making it more robust. We've just come out of a round table with our patrons yeah. and they've given us the big, yes, go for it. So we're going to. Launch a GoFundMe. And flipping heck, look at what you guys have achieved. This is phenomenal. The total number so far at the time of recording is over $63,000, which has just absolutely blown us away. So what does this mean for Brewpeg? It means we can get the stuff we need to do the job the way it should be done. So we're not skimping, saving and hoping. It's amazing. It means we can get a professional to evaluate what's been happening, uh, what's been installed so far. Uh, design with Damien, design the system that we actually need, size things the right way <laughs> and install it in collaboration with us. So it's pretty amazing. It also means that we may be collaborating with Victron. Woo! I mean, that's our dream. Um, so Damien will talk more about that with you later. It, it's amazing. This week has been incredible. In the background, chaos organizing things trying to figure out design trying to organize sponsorship coping with emotions um and also my house has taken a little bit of a downturn so i'm being well looked after by the guys thank you you guys um but just just it's in the background it sort of adds to the stress and adds to the good stress and bad stress but we're getting there so with great gofundme comes great responsibility we're going to be running a youtube live event for every single person that contributed to the gofundme it's going to be happening this weekend we will cover all of the system design um, the update on the Victron potential Victron sponsorship. Um, we have the generator orders. So we want to go through some of the details because we'll have a lot more information to be able to share at that live feed because it will be one week from when this is filmed. Uh, we'll also have the electrician having have walked through the boat by then. So we'll have a really good idea of system design that we're going to be going for. And we've also got a bit of a twist that happened at our Patreon roundtable. It made us think differently and we've got some a little uh, tweak that we want to do to the design, which I think is going to be pretty cool. So if you want to be a part of that YouTube uh, live feed, we're going to send a link out on the GoFund me so everyone that has donated is going to get a link to that live feed um, emailed out to them so really hope to see you guys there it's been pretty amazing and we really want to include you guys so hopefully we'll all see you there one job that won't go away is we need to understand what failed in the last system welcome to the battery box Do you see any current on that, uh, number seven positive wire? i've got 0. 0.83 of an amp. I'm gonna do voltage now. I'm in solar and I'm getting battery voltage, 26 volts. Oh, th okay, this is one of the things that we're doing. So I just measured it and it had 26 volts, but then it drops off to nothing. That looks like a capacitor bleeding out. So theoretic, yeah, actually that's a good point. I didn't think of that. So, okay, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So it's, it's yeah, capacitor. I'm measure across those. Nothing. Can you take those up and go upstairs and check your panel voltage? So 20, yeah, okay. 27 volts there, which is like it's it's rainy and cloudy, so that's probably okay. Uh, 27, 27, 81. Well, the fact that we're getting weird measurements, voltage measurements around the place, is our grounds not truly grounds anymore? Whatever you want us to do, like we can, Bert can be working all day on wiring for three days, ten days if we want. Yeah. Like that, we yeah. can we can do it, and you guys can do it in the evenings. We could. Yeah. The labouring is not, I'd rather do what's necessary, do the right thing, the right thing yeah. rather than just yeah. try and limit the amount of effort, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I'm really hoping might come out of this guy's fund me is if you get the resources where you can get a good battery bank. That's an excellent segue, Duncan, into how much research we've done to try to find the right equipment for this energy revamp. We've looked at every brand that people recommended in the comments that came up frequently, and then we went through all of the specifics that we need. Red is bad, blue is good, and the only two that really came out on top were Victron and Mastervolt. We know Mastervolt Vault make quality equipment, but we've never had any exposure to that brand. We know and understand Victron, so we're much more comfortable going with Victron so that we can fix it if we ever need to in remote places. Jess mentioned that Victron might be working with us. Now, I kind of want to give you an idea as to the impact that one person can have. One of our viewers, and I'm, I apologize, I can't find your name in the comments, but they contacted Victron and said exactly what's going on on Brewpeg. You know, we had some issues, we burnt out the controllers and, and so on. Do you guys want to step up and help out? Victron then contacted David at Revolution Power. David is a marine electrician. He basically designs and installs these types of systems all the time. He also creates uh, lithium batteries. He's got some really good lithium batteries. He, he touched base with us and said, uh, Victron's asked me to give you a call, figure out what's going on on the boat, see if we can do something. As a result of one person getting hold of Victron, sending them an email, 
we now have Victor on talking to us about sponsorship. And it looks about 95% likely that that's going to go ahead. We need to have a DC qualified marine electrician come on board the boat and do a full look over the boat, figure out where we're at right now and where we need to get to. So that's scheduled for Monday. It's uh, Friday right now, so a couple of days time. We're going to have a, a picture of where we're at. He's then going to go through with David. So Damon is the electrician, David is the Victron contact. Between the two of them, they're going to design up a system. We've got a fairly good idea as to what we're going to be installing, but we just need to obviously confirm that with what's on the boat. Between the two of them, we'll have that system designed roughly middle of next week, we're hoping. Uh, and then that allows us to start pushing forward, get the parts, order them, sit them on the boat, that sort of thing. Now, we ran a GoFundMe in the meantime. Obviously, you guys know about this and it's completely transformed what we've been able to do on board the boat. One of the major things that we need to do with any install that we're going forward is we need to sort of do a holistic view of what do we need to create on the boat. And one of the big limitations that we have is our inverters. And the second big limitation that we have is our genset. We just don't have a genset that's big enough to cover everything we need. And, and we've known this. We've never pretended that the five kilowatt generator is anything other than an emergency backup for us. So for us, we want to keep that generator, but we also want to second it for a primary generator. We've been able to order that. This is the generator here. It's a Kubota engine with a Leroy Soma alternator. So it does come with a soundproof case around it. However, that soundproof case is far too big to fit in the boat. So we need to strip that off and run it as an open generator set inside the boat. Now to do that, that generator is located in Victoria, which is at the bottom of Australia. We need to freight it up to Bundaberg. So it's probably a couple of thousand kilometers that we move, need to move it. Now, if we move it with the box on, there's obviously more space and weight that we have to freight. And we're gonna strip that box off and get rid of it in Bundaberg. So one of our viewers, Ryan McLeod, He's offered to strip that box off for us and then freight it a couple of days later and it's going to be a much smaller package. Now not only did Ryan offer to strip this genset down and get it up to us at a much reduced cost because we're not freighting so much mass, Ryan was actually the person that found this generator for us. The cheapest generator I could find that was equivalent was about $16,500 and this generator we found for $12,100 plus GST, so a huge saving. So incredible thank you so much for this ryan this means a lot to us you've saved brew peak a lot of money you've saved us a lot of time and, and a lot of sort of effort and hassle trying to get rid of that box that we we can't use on this boat we're incredibly grateful we really appreciate it thank you because then once we get it up to brew peak we're able to move the boat around to a commercial wharf which then allows us to cut the back of the boat open drop the generator in and start working from a commercial point of view we don't have to be restricted where we are right now we can't do any of that heavy engineering and at the commercial wharf we can do all of that. We don't have to haul Brewpeg out of the water. Now it wouldn't be Brewpeg if we didn't celebrate this good juju that's happening by building something. That something happens to be some mounts for a barbecue that we bought a long time ago. So on the bottom of the barbecue we've got these little legs that sit like that so you can sit it on a flat surface. But we're taking the legs off and we're going to bolt it to this here so we end up with a permanently bolted fixture to the back end of the boat. Now to make those fixtures we're taking a piece of stainless box section, cutting a V into it. So this is going to be the V on number two and then once that's in we bend it up so that we've got a a V like so, bolted at each end onto the barbecue, and then where the V meets at the bottom, we're gonna weld a piece straight down, which we get welded onto the bollocks, and that's our permanent mount for the barbecue. With those two clamped together when we tack them we know that we're going to get um, exactly the same like angle and everything the fit up here is a bit rubbish but we can fill that up pretty easily with some uh, filler rod we've got some pretty big filler rod we can use it and then this guy here we've done two of them the same they'll tack on the bottom like that and then weld out so we're going to have two y frames bolt onto the bottom of this guy here while the barbecue is being worked on we've got more work going on for the prep on the new electrical system I'm sure to write down that at 90 volts is open circuit this is the start of the uh, multitude of drawings that I need to do. This is the solar charge controllers, basically the current layout that we have. I have need to redraw this because I didn't leave myself enough room for the negatives. So I've done an awful thing to make sure I remember to redraw it. But that's basically everything as it currently sits with the solar, um, as it stands right now. This is our current inverter um, schematic that I'm drawing. As you can see, I haven't really got that far into it, but we're going to do that. And then we also need to put one together for our AC, where that comes from. So from our inverters, shore, shore power or genset. So there's a few that I have to do, but need to get these guys done first. Working through. Yeah. This is our electrical diagram as it stands right now. The, the system in the boat right now. And we have to figure out? Loads. Loads. While I figure out gensets and wiring, they're figuring out how much power we're actually using. And we're... And it's breaking it down to, okay, so... 
the washing machine is runs 40 minutes per per load uh, including six people on board and you know then a, a towel wash and a sheet wash a week so it's eight, eight washes a week so we've got to figure out the actual uh, break it down and get that number so that's what we're doing at the moment so i'm not sure if we have everything no. that's all we have for capital i think that's probably worth repeating. This is what the wiring diagram that I drew ended up like. So it's got our batteries, fuses, switches, inverters, buzz bars, solar, regulators, you name it, it's all on there. It made sense to me, but it wasn't something I was proud enough to hand over to a Sparky. So Duncan worked his magic, put it through a software program, and made it look absolutely stunning. With the load details done, it was time to get back onto the barbecue mounts. Burke was getting TIG welding withdrawals, so he had another go at it. What's going on over here? Just doing some barbecue stand welding. Why? Why? <laughs> that, that joke worked twice. <laughs> so Bert's gonna made these mounts. They're now fitted to the barbecue down here, so bolted on the original brackets, and we just need to, we've cut them to length, and we're now gonna weld them onto the back of the boat so we can actually use this. After a bit of faffing around to try and get it welded in the wind, it's welded in the wind. Look, it works. Nice. So it is, bro. All right, the only question that really matters, does it produce enough mmm? All right, sausies, lamb, and something else. <laughs> If you or someone you know has been watching too much Gordon Ramsay and has been affected by wanky cooking scenes... Bland, I love my taste gloopy fucking glue. I feel like I'm eating donkey's cock. They're putting rum on the menu. It's not a crab cake. It's a crab cake. What the hell is that? Looks like it's just had a giraffe's tongue cut out and deep fat fried. When you take a bite of that cod, it's almost like you've got a breaded condom in your mouth. As you can see, the barbie is quite the success. I like our barbecue. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you finally got one. You're on the dingley. Who would have thought? Who's a brave little pussycat? It feels a bit surreal. We've been at this marina the whole time from when we bought the boat. We were on the hard stand over the back here and then we came into the water here in October. The whole time we've been basically a tenant of this marina. And it's kind of weird. Tomorrow morning at seven o'clock, we're starting the boat up and we're heading down river and it's going to be the first time we've actually left here and gone anywhere in Brewpeg for real. I know it's only like 200 metres up river, so it's a tiny, tiny trip, but it is the first trip that we've ever had on Brewpeg where we are genuinely going somewhere else, which is kind of cool. And this has only been possible because of everybody that's supported us, viewed us, commented, subscribed, Patreons, Everyone that's donated parts and time and expertise, you guys have made this possible. None of what we do is possible without the support that you guys show us, and we're incredibly grateful. We're grateful that you guys support us on our second GoFundMe. The first was when our engine had a whole bunch of issues and we had to replace it. The second, when our electrics had a bunch of issues and we had to do something with that. You guys have made this possible, and we're incredibly grateful. If you'd like to see more, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any videos. And thank you to everybody that's donated and contributed to this GoFundMe. It means the world to us.